following on from my last video about Melisso palynology, I wanted to discuss these pollen identification cards. Although they are useful in giving you a rough idea about what pollen sources your bees may be visiting, depending on the area that you live in. If you've ever used these, you'll know that the colour of the pollen you see on your bees won't necessarily match the colour of on the card. A classic example is Himalayan balsam. Let's see. It appears this yellowy colour, but when you look at the pollen on the bee, it's usually a white pollen. So how can you be sure what you think you see coming in on your bees is actually any of these uh, plants? You may be seeing a yellow pollen, this sort of colour on your bee, and you may be thinking that's Himalayan balsam, when in actual fact, it's not. And don't get me wrong, I think these are really useful. Um, uh, when you read um, this section here, it says, uh, colours change appearance according to the light by which they are viewed. Therefore, when using these cards, pollen should be observed in bright, indirect sunlight. For example, on a cloudy day, or in the shade of a sunny day. Well, it's a, it's a cloudy day. The only surefire way to find out is to take some pollen samples from a varroa tray and put them under the microscope to find out. And even then, how will I know what pollen I'm looking at under the microscope on these cards? So I thought over the following year, it would be interesting to collect pollen samples from the plants on these identification cards each month. Let's divide this month into half and start with Himalayan balsam, ivy, Michaelmas daisy and dandelion. Still in flower at the moment are dahlia, so I'd like to check out dahlia. love it or loathe it, our bees go mad for it and come back covered in it from top to toe. Let's find out what it looks like under the microscope. Himalayan balsam. Got a slide prepared. Michaelmas Daisy. Old Faithful, always there when you need it, highly underrated. Let's have a look at the intricacies of dandelion under 
the microscope. Dandelion. I've included dahlia because it's spilling over into the end of October. This particular variety is called knockout and the bees certainly thought so. Let's look at the pollen. Dahlia. So what do you think they're collecting? Himalayan balm, ivy, Macumas daisy, dandelion, or large purple flowering crocus. So whilst the bees are bringing in pollen and it's nice and dry, the only way I'm going to be able to get any pollen samples, I'm going to put a burrow tray in one of these hives and we'll see whether we can collect some pollen loads. Hoping to get a pollen load from each plant that we've covered in this video, but that all depends on whether the bees are being extra proficient at packing their pollen away. After all, pollen is a precious resource at the moment. And you know what they say about best laid plans, whether I get a pollen load from each of those plants, it's probably unlikely. Remember that the pollen cards I'm using give the beekeeper a general idea about what the bees are foraging on. These plants may have a shorter or longer flowering season, depending where your apiaries are based and where you are in the world. I'll do my best to cover other plant pollen samples into November and December and over the coming winter months. Joy. Pollen collecting day, been followed by yet another wet day. So whilst the rain's holding off, I'm going to take this pollen varroa tray out, see if we've collected anything. No, not really. Other than wax cappings and a bit of varroa drop. So I'm collecting the larger pollen crumbs dropped at the front of the tray where the bees had been entering the hive. There's a bit of a clue attached to one of the pollen loads as to where the bees have been. There's an anther stuck to it. But let's get this small sample onto a slide so we can either confirm or deny our suspicions. Now the slide's dry, let's pop it under the microscope and see what we have. The pollen loads the bees collected yesterday was ivy.
So looking at the same footage from earlier, did you guess the pollen load by going on the colour chart alone? And would you still choose the same colour now you know it's ivy? I'll cover the second half of October on the pollen chart in my next video. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye!